we have been called by the Lord to help his children to be in good health and prosper even as our soul shall prosper we are going live we are live on uh, YouTube this morning last week youtubers I'm so sorry I thought because it was the first time I did it last week so I didn't I wasn't sure how to do it so on YouTube I forgot to give you a screen and share so you, you weren't seeing my screen you were only seeing me so you missed half of the presentation but this week by the leading of the Lord we got it correct morning Facebook live welcome 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 last week when i checked this morning over 350 persons have watched the program from last week on facebook live we are happy to have you we're happy to be sharing with you because indeed god wants all of his children healthy we're kingdom children and he's a king and he takes care of his own and so it's very very important that we continue to do what we do for his honor and for his glory welcome everybody so i'm going to do the opening prayer then we're going to do our opening hymn and we're going to go straight into our presentation. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, and for your love. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ, your darling Son, who you gave. We talk about February being a, a month where we're celebrating what they call Valentine's. But Lord, that's not love. Love is demonstrated by you in John 3 16. When you made it very clear, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You didn't send Jesus to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so, Father, when we understand what Adam lost in the Garden of Eden, when he rebelled against you and sinned against your direct command, the second, the last Adam, Jesus, has come and he obeyed all of your commandments. Jesus Christ is now the last Adam. And Jesus has now given us back everything we lost in the Garden to Adam and Eve. Everything. Restoration has been done over 2,000 years ago, but there are many on the planet who don't know. They are still in slavery, in spiritual slavery, and you are raising up your redeemed children by the power of your Holy Spirit with the angels here ministering unto us to tell the world, to blow the trumpet and tell the children salvation free. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has paid the price. His name shall be called Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Father, we thank you for the good news. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Bringing us back to your heartbeat. Where your babies and you love us passionately. Father, your love is attractive to me. Your love pulls us to you with cords that can't be broken by Satan. So Jesus, we thank you. Your blood has paid the price. Without blood, there is no remission of sin. The price has been paid. We have been redeemed. You did it all. And you are in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary now as our Redeemer. You are there as our High Priest. You are there interceding on our behalf. The investigative judgment is going on. And when it is finished, when every single case has been examined, Lord Jesus, you're going to say again, as you've told us in Revelation 14, 15, it is finished. It is finished. This world's probation will be closed. The seven last plagues are going to hit planet earth. But until then, Jesus, we have a work to do as your redeemed children, your ambassadors, your disciples. Spirit of the living God, may you take full control of me, my mouth, my heart, my mind. Use me, God, and represent your kingdom today. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. And Jesus, talk to your daughters today. Today is we We're talking about women's health today. So I pray, Lord God, for all the females who are on the platform, all the females who are on youtube live all the females who are on facebook and all the females and the men who are men coming with wives and daughters and sisters and brothers yes 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 and all the men too lord who will be hearing and listening may your blessing be upon us in a way that we have never seen lord baptize us with your holy spirit in jesus name we pray that your kingdom the kingdom of heaven will be glorified magnified and exalted through this presentation today and Lord, for all of those who will see the video in the future as we're taping, oh Lord, may you bless your sons and your daughters with your love and your care towards us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now before we go to the hymn, before we go to the hymn, I'm going to just ask everybody who's on to just open your mic so we can say good morning to every, each other. So I see Suzette, I see Charmaine, I see Joan. Uh, open your mic so we can say good morning to each other. All right. 
Good morning. Good morning, Suzette. Welcome. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Who else we have on the line this morning? Yes. Denise. Good morning. Good morning, SSJ. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Denise. Good morning, Donette. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good to have you. All right. So we're going to go into our opening hymn and then we'll go straight to our presentation. this morning. Let me open my screen share and let us jump into this presentation. Now, the topic of women's health is going to take me maybe three Fridays to cover everything on this topic because I'm not going to rush the presentation. There's just too much impacting our women 
for me to hastily go through this. I'm going to go through it very, very slowly. Um, so we may do two weeks or I may do three weeks, depending on how um, everything goes, okay? Female anatomy and physiology. Diseases affecting the body. Diseases affecting the body, part one. My name is Dr. Well, my name is Deborah Williams. I'm a doctor, <laughs> right? I'm a Seventh-day Adventist medical missionary evangelist. And I'm also a healthy lifestyle educator. I see many new faces coming on. I know exactly where you're coming from, from the um, Faith, Firm Faith University. We have some persons coming from Real Both, Real Both uh, Open Bible Church. We did a 21 day fasting and prayer with them. And we have also been inviting uh, church brothers and sisters from across the world to join us this morning. Now, as we look at the topic of female anatomy and physiology, how the body is made up and how the body parts function. But there are so many diseases affecting the female body. And Jesus, Jesus Christ, the great physician, he wants his daughters healthy. Now I look at the Bible, I just open my Bible because my Bible is always on my desk, right? Always, always. I have, I have two Bibles at home, I have two Bibles, I have one in the vehicle. I'm always trying to feature my, my mind on the Word of God. And we see in Mark chapter 5, where Jesus raised a girl from the dead and he heals a bleeding woman. Over and over as we go through the Bible, we see Jesus tender love for women. Mary Magdalene, who they said they caught her in adultery and they wanted to stone her to death. And Jesus said, I don't condemn you. Who can condemn you? And he told Mary to go and sin no more. Right? Put away your life of sin. And so over and over, we see Jesus showing his compassion. Mary, a woman, was the first person who got the privilege of coming to see the risen Messiah, the risen Savior. It was Mary who was the first person that saw that, right? So we know he loves the women. It was women who supported the ministry of Jesus when he was here on this earth. So we're gonna be talking about, now I have in front of me a report that I do each month in my office. So every month we do a compilation of the disease that we saw coming into us for the month. Now I would safely say that 95% of my patients are women. It's safe to say that. 95% of my, my patients are really females, right? Because you know, women tend to be more proactive in coming to a doctor when they're healthy than the men. And so about 90, 95% of my patients are females. In the month of January, 2024, so we started a new year, January. What did we see in the month of January in terms of diseases coming in? Hypertension, weight loss, asthma, anemia, tumor of the pancreas, high cholesterol, breast cancer, constipation, fibroids, liver disease, acid reflux, lung cancer, shaking, excessive shaking of the hands, body pains, joint pains, blood prostate cancer, one male, tingling in the hands, numbness in the feet, back pain, shoulder pain, rheumatic arthritis, thyroid issues, sinusitis, diabetes, hemorrhoids, swollen feet, obesity, cysts on the liver, uh, pre-menopause issues, gall, bladder, stones. So uh, 90 to 95% are women. So we know that something is going wrong with our women and it has to be addressed, needs to be addressed. So over the next two or three weeks, we're gonna go through it slowly, looking at diseases affecting the body of our women. Now my sisters, I have to make it very clear, the, I, I, I must do this medical disclaimer. Because persons are coming on the platform, they're hearing what I'm saying, they're just running off to start buying herbs and supplements, and they have not been properly uh, counseled. If you are suffering from any of the diseases mentioned in this presentation, you need to have one-on-one -on -one counseling. And so, the information provided in this program is designed for educational purposes only, and reflects the biblical lifestyle designed by God for our health and happiness. The information presented here is not to be used as medical advice or to diagnose or treat disease. Rather, it reflects the convictions of Bible-believing Christians in regard to our biblical understanding of how to cooperate with God in the work of healing which He promised to do. Therefore, the use or misuse of any information contained herein is at the sole risk and discretion of the user and life health and food ministries is not liable for any negative effects or worthy of praise for any positive results.
for diagnosis, treatment, or any other procedures, including surgical and medical advice, seek your doctor. For healing, consult the great physician, ladies and gentlemen. Please read Psalm 103, 1 to 3, Exodus 15, and verse 26. Praise the Lord. Now, we are coming to you this morning. For those who are new with us, and I see many new faces popping up on this system this morning. Praise God. We love it when we have new persons joining us um, on the platform. We are coming to you from Life Head and Foods Ministries, which was started in 2012, from my recovery from breast cancer experience. And then in 2017, when I became a doctor, um, I launched Life Head and Foods Wellness Center. Now, we are located at shop number 7, 4 Springdale Avenue, Kingston 10. Look in the chat. We have given you in the chat our website. We have given you a link to my two books. We have given you the link to my YouTube channel. So the, all the links are right there in the chat. The phone numbers for the office, they are all in the chat. Okay? Now, our mission under Jesus Christ, the great physician, my boss, my leader, and my king, is changing lives preserving and restoring health. So Dr. Deborah Williams have been raised up by God for his glory. So the title doctor doesn't really mean much to me now, to be very honest with you, except that it, God used it to open many doors. So in other words, before I became a doctor, I was a medical missionary. And I was traveling all over Jamaica and across the Caribbean without a doctor title. And I was watching Jesus healing people. But many persons were reluctant to come because they never said the title doctor. And they couldn't understand the medical missionary have more power under Jesus who gave the same medical missionary power to Peter when Peter was healing the sick and raising the dead. And the medical missionary had the same power that Paul got when the little boy fell off the, 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 the window, dropped down dead, and Peter, Paul covered him and Paul prayed over him. The medical missionaries have the same power when the shadow of Peter, the shadow of Paul was healing people. So we got to understand that when Jesus raised up medical missionaries, it's not about the person, it's about Jesus Christ. He gives power to his servants to execute his work here on earth. And so, yes, Denise, praise the Lord, hallelujah. So we are here. I have been called by God. Listen, I, we, you have to understand what your purpose is, Denise and everybody. Ladies, gentlemen, Sandra, Suzette, you have to know why God placed you upon the planet, right? So now for years, the devil had me in chains. But in 2007, Jesus set me free. I got baptized and became a, a kingdom child. A kingdom child in the Seventh-day Adventist movement, right? The reform movement. And so, it took me years as Jesus did the sanctification, right? As I grew in understanding of who God is and who I am. And then in 2012, when breast cancer came, Jesus started revealing to me, Deborah, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you and I ordained you to be a medical missionary. And so come now, I'm going to train you and I'm going to give you my power to go out there and help my people so that they can understand that the kingdom still have power to heal. Praise the Lord. So my, my, my role, my purpose, very, very clear, training medical missionaries and making health disciples for the glory of Almighty God. That's my mission for the rest of my life. I'm crystal clear. And so this is why we're in the platform this morning. This is why we're training, because we are representing Jesus Christ, the great physician. Now, we have a group of persons that we call partners in ministry. They are partners in ministry, and without them, this couldn't go on. Because we have staff that have to be paid, we have rent that have to be paid, we have office expenses that have to be paid, uh, etc., etc., right? And so we have persons who are partnering with us in ministry to help us. And so, again, at this part, I always call one of my partners in ministry to do a special prayer for our partners. Not, not everybody can give cash. Some persons are partners through prayer. So I'm going to ask Denise Simpson, who's one of our partners in ministry. Denise, can you open your mic? Yes, good morning. Praise the Lord. So Denise is one of our partners in ministry. And I'm going to ask Denise now to pray for all of our partners in ministry. Let's go with this prayer. Almighty God, you are the ruler of the universe. You create us, you redeem us, you sanctify us, you justify us. 
Father, we come before you with grateful heart. And I'm just rejoicing when your daughter reminded us that the same power that you gave the disciples, that even the very shadow can heal sick, and you gave them authority to cast out demons and to trample upon serpents and upon scorpions. You are the same God who is with us today and using your children, your servants, your medical missionaries, your people to bring messages of hope and love. And Lord, we understand that this ministry needs assistance. It needs support in prayer because prayer unlocks the treasures of heaven. When we intercede and we give you permission, oh God, you come in and you come in large and in charge and we thank you for this. We also want to thank you for the donors who have been contributing not only kind in, in terms of books and clothing and articles, different kinds of articles, but for those who provide financial support. Lord, we ask that you bless each and every donor, each and every partner. Lord, we give you thanks for them. And we ask that these gifts, oh God, that you will take them just as Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish. And Lord, pray that you will multiply it, almighty God, so that it can cover and meet the needs of those who are coming and seeking for help. Your daughter has committed herself in this ministry. You have given her a burning desire to lead this beautiful ministry. I know she is not charging anyone. But Father, the bills have to be paid, the staff have to be paid, and they have been doing such a beautiful job. And I know, God, that you are the one who will continue to provide for all of our needs. And so we beseech you, thank you for the hearts that will contribute. Thank you for the hearts that will continue to send our prayers. Thank you for the hearts that will give emotional and physical support to this ministry. And we bless your name for the word, the information that will so help us know for those who will be listening now and those who will be listening later. Thank you for blessing us with this beautiful and valid information. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Denise. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Denise. Thank you so very much. Now, I see many new faces and new names on the platform this morning. So quickly, let me give you an idea of what Denise is talking about in that prayer. 20, 20 August 26, 2022. I got clear instructions from the Lord through a friend of mine. Deborah, stop charging for consultations. You are not a regular doctor. You are my servant. Now, I started doing it partially, but I never fully understand the message because how can I run an office? Be a doctor, pay staff, pay rent, pay bills. Give me out all these books free and I'm not charged. So I did it partially. And then last year, which was 2023, God for you see, God away you now. He tell you something slow. It's when you know hear, he said, Pick them open your ears. <laughs> or for English. Chill, child, open your ears. Hear what the spirit is saying. So last year, in 2023, God came back and said, Deborah, you're not understanding. I didn't say partially open the ministry. I said fully open the ministry. And so I think it was October, November last year, 2023, we completely stopped charging. So what we do is that we do consultations with persons who are sick across the world, right? Whether it's in office or on um, you know, Zoom or WhatsApp or uh, Facebook, whatever. We, 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 are, we, we do consultations. It's normally a one hour consultation. Sometimes it goes into two hours. Because it's a ministry, and so when persons come, if they're not yet in the kingdom of God, then I have to introduce them to my king. And so sometimes, now, I have to go even on two hours, just bringing them over and understanding the whole great controversy, the Bible, Jesus Christ, God the Father. And after I deal with that, I have to now talk about the cancer, the diabetes, the hypertension. Then I have to go over into the diet and the smoking and the drinking. And sometimes it might take two hours. But Jesus says, Deborah, it's my office. You're my servant. So if it takes two or three hours to get a child out of the prince of darkness camp and carry them into my camp, sit down and do it. 
And so now I'm relaxed, I'm relaxed, I'm at peace. And I started doing it. And as I've been telling the story of how we're doing it, partners have been coming on. So Denise is one of them who just prayed for us. Thank you, Jesus. I know it is really very refreshing. I must tell you all, it's refreshing. You know why? When I was Dr. Williams, Dr. Williams, you know, regular doctor office. Now, I had in my spirit that I must evangelize. But then how do I evangelize somebody who walks into my office, you know, they're committing fornication, they're in a backslidden position. How do I now evangelize them when they just paid $8,500 at the front desk? I remember one time this lady came in, she's baptized, backslidden. She's having sex with a man who's not her husband in the baptized, but she baptized. We <coughs> lived together. And the moment I saw the form and I saw this, I knew I had to deal with it. And she was coming to me. She wanted to get pregnant. She not married. And I started talking to her about, you know, she's baptized and you're a child of God. And she said to me, Dr. Williams, I just paid your front desk $8,500. What will I have to do with this? <laughs> and she was correct because I was charging her. So she expected me to deal with the fact that she wanted to get pregnant. And that was the day when God started planning into my heart. It has to be a ministry. So now, if a similar situation happens, and they come here, nobody's paying my purpose, nothing at all. <laughs> so I can deal with the situation in love, point them to Jesus. Now, when I'm finished, if they choose to make a donation, praise the Lord. If they choose to walk away, praise the Lord. I have done my father's business. That's where the whole thing came from. Now, ladies, as we go forward, I'm going to be taking you on a journey. We're going to be doing a three-part program, or a three-series. Today, I'm going to be focusing on the spiritual component of us as women and what God is expecting of us spiritually. So today is going to be a very spiritual with some physical, and then now next week, we'll go straight into the physical. But if I don't deal with your spiritual, your physical can't get better. It's as simple as that. Now, to proceed... I'm going to ask another partner, which is Suzette. Suzette, can you pray? Suzette knows how to pray for all women as we go into the program. Good morning, everyone. Let us bow our heads, please. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord, for gathering us together, Lord Jesus. Thank you for our presenter, God, who has been diligently researching your word and getting all this information to impart to us, your people, Lord Jesus. And this morning, God, as we come together, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to pour your Holy Spirit upon us, Lord Jesus. And we're praying, God, as this is a spirit-filled meeting as well, Lord, as you pour your blessings on our women, Lord Jesus. Father God, direct this platform, Lord Jesus. Father God, we pray that there are no breaches, Lord. And as we go through the series, God, open our ears, our hearts, our minds, Lord Jesus. And give us temperance, Lord, to listen to your word and follow through, Lord God. We thank you again, God. We praise you, God. And where we've earned and sinned against you, God, we ask for forgiveness, God. And we tell you thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Suzette. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Now, I just spoke about partnership with Life, Health, and Food Wellness Center. Walk with me, as God impressed me yesterday, through a book called Christ Object Lesson, Partnership with God. Walk with me, sisters. Because I believe of the three weeks that I'm going to talk to you, this week is the most important one. Now, walk with me, ladies. God and Christ and angels are all ministering to the afflicted, the suffering, and the sinful. Give yourself to God for this work. Use his gifts for this purpose. And you enter into partnership with heavenly beings. Your heart will throb in sympathy with theirs. You will be assimilated to them in character. To you, these dwellers in the eternal tabernacles will not be strangers. When earthly things shall have passed away, the watchers at heaven's gates will bid you welcome, sisters. You know, when I read this years ago, because... There's a book called Christ Object Listen by Helen G. White. I read it years ago. It was written in 1900. She died in 1915. And my copy of this book is so tattered and torn because I've read it so much. I've marked it so much. And I'm rereading it again this year. God, the Father, Jesus Christ, and the angels, are, they are ministering. 
They have not left one sick, suffering, sinful person down here to be the sport of Satan. And God is saying to my sisters this morning, give yourself to God for this work. Get into the work of helping the afflicted, the suffering, and the sinful sisters. God said, use all the gifts he has given you. Your intellect, your influence, your time, your money, everything you have, sisters. The gifts that God gave you because we own nothing down here. God says, use the gifts. Yes, is it? God said, use the gifts that he has given us for this purpose. And, sisters, come on. No, no, how, I, I am so excited. And you, sisters, Suzette, Denise, all the ladies on the platform, and the gentlemen, who are not leaving us, our brothers, even though it's women for us this week, right? And uh, enter into partnership with heavenly beings. Now tell me, who in the world can offer you a partnership better than this one? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Once we enter into a partnership, with all the heavenly beings, God promises us our heart will throb in sympathy with, the, with the, those who are fitted, those who are suffering, and those who are sinful. It's a gift from God. Then we will be assimilated. Come on, ladies, talk about sanctification. Talk about changing to the image of God. Talk about being partakers of divine nature. We will be assimilated into God's character. So when we talk about we are no Christians, or we are no kingdom children. God is saying you cannot be a kingdom child if you are not ministering to the afflicted, the suffering, and the sinful. This is exciting for me, and this is why I've given up the banking world, gave up all of the traveling around the world, working for Inter-American Development and Caribbean Development Bank and Scotia Bank. This is why I walked away from it. Because I read this years ago, and I realized, hold on. There's a bigger, better partnership than Scotia Bank. There's a bigger, better partnership than Inter-American Development Bank. I used to work at Bank of Jamaica. God offered me a better partnership. I used to work at Sajipur Bank. God gave me a better partnership. And now, ladies, we are being invited to be in partnership with the heavenly beings. The reading goes on to say, and the means used to bless others will bring returns. You know, I have a friend who said this. I had so many money invested in stocks and bonds. And when COVID came, I lost everything. Now, can you imagine if he had built all of those millions that he had dumped in these stocks and bonds into God kingdom? He could lose. No, he lost it during COVID, right? The means used to bless others will bring returns. Riches, right employed, will accomplish great good. So you can wrongly employ your riches, says God. Sources, sorry, souls will be won to Christ. He who follows Christ's plan for life will see in the courts of God those for whom he has labored, sisters, and sacrificed and sacrificed, sacri sacrificed on earth. Gratefully will the ransom ones remember those who have been instrumental in their salvation. Precious, precious will heaven be to those who have been faithful in the work of saving souls. My sisters, I am appealing to all of my girls on the platform this morning, all of my sisters, start investing money in the God kingdom. Invest your money in helping others to come to Jesus. The returns are sure and you cannot lose now it says in the same book, right? Continue the reading. Christ calls upon everyone to consider. Make an honest reckoning. This morning, ladies, I have 40 of us on the platform this morning. Those who are on Facebook Live watching right now. Those who are on YouTube Live watching right now. Jesus Christ is calling everyone to consider what is being said. Make an honest reckoning. 1A and 1B. What? Carefully, you know, this went into the slide two days ago because every Wednesday we have fasting and prayer. And on Wednesdays, I sat down with the PowerPoint. I said, Lord, is there anything else in this PowerPoint that you want to tell the women? And all of these slides just went in, they weren't in there before. So I am presenting this straight from my king 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. You examine, ladies, where are you? Are you in 1A or 1B? 
are you in 2A or 2B? How is your scale balancing out? What is having the most weight for you? Walk with me. 1A. Put into one scale Jesus, which means eternal treasure, life, truth, heaven, and the joy of Christ in souls redeemed. One part of the scale. 1B. Put into the other every attraction the world can offer. Ladies, are you 1A or 1B? Ladies, are you 1A or 1B? How you scale the balance? 2A into one scale. Put the loss of your own soul and the souls of those whom you might have been instrumental in saving. 2A or 2B into the other scale for yourself and for them. A life that measures with the life of God. Ladies, how you balance your scale this morning? Which one has the most weight for you? God is calling you out this morning, you know. It says, wait for time and for eternity. While you are thus engaged, Christ speaks. What shall it profit a man? I know man no mean it's, it's neutral. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean physical man or physical woman. Mm -hmm. It means mankind, right? What shall it profit a man? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Mark 8 and verse 38. Ladies, sisters, mothers, daughters, on the platform this morning, Christ is calling you out. How does your life measure on God's priority scale? Think about it, ladies. All right. God desires us to choose the heavenly in place of the earthly. He opens before us, sisters, my sisters, he opens before us the possibilities of an heavenly investment. He would give in, he would give encouragement to our loftiest aims, security to our choicest treasure. He declares, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedges of offer. That's Isaiah 13, verse 12. When the riches that moth devours and rust corrupts shall be swept away, Christ's daughters can rejoice in their heavenly treasure. The riches, yes, is it? The riches that are imperishable. Now, my only regret in life is that it took me so long to come to Jesus. Because when I got baptized in 2007, I was 37 years old. That's my only regret. And my only regret, I never come sooner because life with God is so sweet. Life with Christ is so amazing. My God, you have to love God. God's love is so attractive. Better than all the friendship of the world is the friendship of Christ redeemed. Better than a title to the, to the noblest palace on earth is a title to the mansions our God has gone to prepare, my sisters. And better than all the words of earthly praise will be the Savior's words to his faithful servants. My sisters, <laughs> come, come, he blessed up my father, said Jesus. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew 25, 30, 34. My sisters, our worth is not in our body, the physical body. Our worth cannot be quantified by house care and land. Our worth is in the blood of God's son that was shed, Julian, to redeem us, to redeem us. You know, before I became a Christian, you know, my, if, well, for those of you who knew me on the platform before I became a Christian, I was home in the club and close in the club, right? I mean, I was such a heathen and such a wicked woman. And Jesus knew that before the foundation, before the world was, God had different in mind. And God knew that September 24th, 1970, one woman named Elaine Williams and a man named Bertram Williams would give birth to a woman named Deborah Elaine Simone Williams. And for 30 years of her life, the devil was all her. But Jesus said, make him go on because come, September, come February 17th, 2007, I went, take my daughter. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Ladies on the platform, can you identify? Can you identify with salvation free? Can 
and you remember the day when you got baptized and you received the Holy Spirit and you said the devil to back off? Can you remember the sweetness of the love of a father who says, Denise, Suzette, I'm going to give you a kingdom. Inherit the kingdom. It was prepared for you before the world was even made. PDs, Josian, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Now, my sisters, now that you understand why I am so charged up, watch now how God has been grooming me and growing me. So I, God has given me an international ministry. I work with pastors and elders and lay people all over the world. I go from place to place in book ministry and evangelism, teaching God's children how to be healthy, right? We go across the Caribbean, we go from place. So I've been doing this from 2012, you know. I, I, I am so grateful for what God has done for me that I can't stand still. It's like impossible for me to stay still. Real truth, health and wellness evangelistic series with Pastor Tavon Thomas. Hallelujah. I remember all of these presentations. I remember the children and the men and how many persons' souls were baptized through these interventions. And it keeps me going. It keeps me charged up because Jesus Christ is so amazing. Now remember I told all of you, coming very soon, I'm going to be launching a lifestyle coaching training course. Listen up for it. We're we are in the preparation mode. I'm going to be launching it the 4th of March. Classes are going to start the 4th of March. So I'll be telling you as we go along when it's ready for you to go on and register for that course. Now, at the end of it all, Jesus Christ is coming back. That's the focus, you know. In all of what we do, in evangelism, in book distribution ministry, in medical missionary work, the focus is Jesus Christ. So he also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. So when people now are taking their eyes off Jesus and everybody thinks to them of, you know, 40 more years to live and they all live until they have three grand picnic and da 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 da. Jesus says he's going to come back at a time we don't even expect him to come back, right? And so we must continue to preach the gospel to the world. That they have to put away their sins. They have to repent. They have to live as kingdom children. Obeying the rules of the king. It's as simple as that. Right? Now we just finished 40 days of fasting. Feasting on the word of God and prayer. It ended this morning. It was a beautiful program. 40 days. With <laughs> dozens and dozens of persons from across the world. Dr. Firm Faith Watson. I told all of you already. Julian. If there's anybody out there and you want Dr. Debs to help you and your church, whether it's a 40 day or it's a 21 days or even a 7 days, it doesn't matter. If you want to do a season of fasting, feasting on the word of God and prayer, and you want to learn how to incorporate the new start into it so you can be physically healthy and spiritually healthy, I am ready to work with your pastor, your elders, and your church. I am ready. So this was beautiful. The last morning was this morning. And I tell you, I have received such blessing by being with Dr. Firm Faith Watson on that 40 days of fasting and prayer. So it ended this morning. We're moving on. So whose church is going to be on here next? Whose church is going to highlight next and say, we are working with this church now. They're doing their fasting and prayer and feasting on the word of God. It's a beautiful. Now, our book ministry. Now remember I told you, we have a book ministry, right? And then he's prayed. So all the patients that come here, they leave here with Bibles and they leave with spiritual books. On Sabbath last, I, from our book ministry, was giving the children their Bibles and their books. Praise the Lord, right? Now, the book ministry is funded from those who are partners with us. So as you send in the Bibles, King James, note it, KJV, <laughs> that's what I want. Bring in the Bibles. Give me, give me the books, right? We go out to the churches, we go out to the organizations, the communities, and we're in a very active book distribution ministry. Your word of encouragement, your health tip and a prayer. Every Monday morning, we do a program live, SPR Live FM. Every Monday morning on my YouTube channel, you go here and every Monday morning we upload it. Every Monday morning. And we've been doing that now from 2021. So this is a very active ministry, as you heard Suzette praying. We are not here collecting your money 
to dress up, not the devs. Why didn't they dress me up? Jesus dressed me up, right? The money goes straight to paying staff, paying the rent, and supporting the ministry, right? That's what it goes into. All right, now, the clothing and shoes drive. Thank you for those who are bringing in the brand new shoes. I mean, the one a second hand shoes. And the brand new clothes, I don't want a second hand clothes, right? Persons are coming in. It's so sad. I'm so, I'm just so excited. When, when I hear a knock on my door and I hear one of my, one of my staff say, Dr. Williams, so-and-so is here and they have a package for the box. And I open the package and say, brand new sneakers, brand new tops, brand new dresses to give to others. Jesus says that when we open our bowl, we'll have compassion. Him say, our health will spring forth speedily. So we have the healthy food donation drive, right? And when the patients come in, our friends who pass by, they're coming in and they're bringing their donations and it's going into the box and we are simply taking it all to the community and sharing. Why should they only eat corned beef and white rice to kill them? Huh? When we can teach them and help them with peas and beans and whole grains and nuts and seeds. So my healthy box now goes into the communities and I'm introducing to them chia seed, never heard of chia seed, pumpkin seed, never heard of pumpkin seed, Dr. Williams, I've never heard of lentils or black beans. All I eat is chicken baka and dumpling. <laughs> chicken baka and dumpling. We have to help. Come on, brothers and sisters. So I'm enjoying it. I, I'm having more fun than the patients, to be very honest. I'm having more fun because I go in, I bring the ministry healing. I bring the counsels and diets and foods. I bring the Bibles. And now I have boxes of food, bags of food to give them. And teach them how to cook it. I am loving it. I am loving it. Thank you for everybody who is bringing in your donations. Now remember, you don't have to be a patient to give me a donation. You can send the cash or we buy the stuff. Or you can pass by the office. We are at shop number 7, 4 Springville Avenue, Kingston, St. Jamaica. Right? Let's carry it come. Let's carry it come. Carry it, carry it come. <laughs> Fill the box so we can help some people. All right, now ladies. Let's go deeper now into women. Anatomy, physiology, diseases affecting the body. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So my sisters, you never come from no monkey. My sisters, it wasn't any big bang theory. My sisters... And my brothers, God made us in his image and in his likeness, meaning his very character was our character. His very mindset was our mindset, right? And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. It is very important, my sisters, that you teach this to your children, because if you are allowing many of those schools to tell your children where they come from, they're being told in school they come from monkey. So we as mothers have to make sure that our children don't leave our homes without us having Bible study and telling them where they came from. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So the whole idea of man and woman is God. So when you see people are much of man and man and woman and woman, that is coming from the kingdom of darkness. But when you are in the kingdom of God, God said man and woman. And we're not confused either. We're not confused about what make woman and what make a man a man. <laughs> The world is going crazy. Now you hear people talking about, oh, I am not male, I am not female, I am neutral. Now who make you neutral? Where that come from? <laughs> Seriously? Seriously? Our bodies are made from the dust of the ground. Scientists have discovered that the 59 elements found in the human body are all found in the earth crust, proving Genesis to be true. We are made from the dirt, right? And so if we want to be healthy, we have to put in the body, my sisters, what made the body. Now, walk with me now. 
Why are we seeing so many women sick? Are we going to talk about women's health? The men, is, men are listening, but your turn, your turn coming, men. Kind of focusing on the women today. Genesis 3, 1 to 7. Now the serpent was more subtle, crafty, than any living creature of the field which the Lord had made. And the serpent, Satan, speaking through the creature, said to the woman, Can it really be that God has said he shall not eat from any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We can eat fruit from the trees of the garden, except the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. God said, You shall not eat from it nor touch it, otherwise you will die. No, God made a clear command to the lady, you know, to the woman. Women, ladies, right? God said, don't. If God said, don't touch it, don't touch it. But the serpent, Satan talking to the serpent, said to the woman, you will not die. God said, you will. The devil said, you will not. What did Eve do? What did Mother Eve do? The serpent went on to say, for God knows that on the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open. That is... You will have greater awareness and you will be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil. No, God never wanted mankind to know evil. God wanted us to know good purity for being him, right? No, the, the serpent, Satan, put up a challenge. So here you have, no, no, God said, the serpent put up a challenge. What is mother evil going to do? What shall I do? What shall I do? And when the woman, ladies, 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 and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, God said, I said, she must eat this, you know. But the devil come talking, there he is now. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was delightful to look at, and that tree to be desired in order to make one wise and insightful, she, my sisters, the she's on the platform this morning, she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her Husband Adam with her and him got eat it too. Then the eyes of the two of them were opened. That is, their awareness increased. And they knew that they were naked. And they fashioned or fastened fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. My sister is on the platform this morning. I cannot believe I lived to the day when women are walking on the road with tear up, tear up, cut up, cut up jeans. I, whenever I see, I, I'm in shock because I remember when I was I was 14 and my, my mother was very poor. She had five children, and I remember I had one jeans, only one. She had five feet and she had those, and my one jeans got torn, and I cried because I had to throw it away. I tear. No me live to see women walking up and down on the road with cut out, cut out, cut out, cut out like mad people and call it fashion. Seriously. Satan, the devil is still talking to the women. The devil is still speaking. But Jesus is pulling his daughters away from the world. And Jesus is saying, daughters, you are royalty. Come follow me. Cover your bodies. Cover your bodies. So this is where the whole argument started, ladies. Understand, it started right here. Why are there so much disease and suffering? Mother Eve caused it. <laughs> she started but remember jesus has given us by the holy spirit so we don't have to listen to the voice of the devil we can choose to listen to the voice of jesus all right now walk with my sisters because i'm very excited this morning because you know, there are some women on the platform that god went and set free today there are some women who are start cover up them body there are some women who are start wear put up put up jeans and there are some women on this platform who's going to start putting healthy food in their bodies today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No, Exodus 15, 26. So remember I said, no, this, this is where the problem started. What is the solution? Walk with me now. So, so problem, problem, solution, solution. God said, sisters, daughters, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases, sisters, upon thee, 
which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healed thee. So ladies, we know we're getting slaughtered. Doctors want to cut off your breasts. They want to cut out your uterus. They want to cut out your thyroid gland. But Jesus says, I am the Lord that healed thee. And for the next three weeks, I'm going to be showing you how all these, these affecting women, all these diseases can be prevented or healed by God using natural remedies. Sisters, we have been redeemed by God through Jesus Christ. Now, as I said before, today I'm focusing on the spiritual a lot. Because if I don't get you in tune with the Holy Spirit, no presentation will make a difference. You're going to come, listen, and you're going to go back like Eve and listen to Satan. So we need to pray and pray and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to cover and cover and cover so that we can go forward. Now, I'm going to ask Piddy, so don't that come around. Now, so Suzette and, Suzette and uh, Denise prayed earlier. Now, those are more mature women. Now, here we have an 18-year-old female. This is my little daughter, Piddy. She works with me in the office. Now, Susan, Susan, sorry, Pedis is not going to pray for the woman in her generation. She's 80. Go ahead, um, Pedis. Come nearer so they can hear you. I'm Dear Heavenly Father, no, no. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your presence with thanksgiving. Lord, we just want to present all the younger women or in my generation. I present, I put them before you, Father, and I ask that you will just breathe your Holy Spirit upon them. Lord, so many distractions are are in the world now, Father. Music, internet, fashion, everything Satan uses as an instrument to distract your daughters. But I pray in Jesus' name that you will continue to use me and Dr. Williams and the medical missionaries to reach to reach the the younger females who are pulled by the tools of this world. Lord, we just want to thank you for your love and for sending Jesus Christ to die for us, Lord. We have a golden opportunity to make ourselves pure, Father, through your son. And I pray that we will all use it as we are still alive. Lord, we just want to ask you for your for your mercy and your grace. And uh, we just want to thank you for your love, Lord, and for using us in wonderful ways. I pray for... Lord, I pray for all the teens, Father, who are heading in the wrong direction because they are yielding to the voice of the devil. We just want to ask you to have mercy upon them, Lord, and to do all that you can to reach them so that they can come to realize the danger that they're heading into. Lord, I ask that you bless each and every one of us this morning as you prepare this present presentation so that we can learn and we can know the truth spiritually and physically. I ask that you continue to watch over us and to lead us in the path of righteousness. In your son's name I pray, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So there we have an 18-year-old female praying for her generation. Every Mary needs a Elizabeth. So I always say when I work with younger women, I am the Elizabeth, they are Mary. Remember when Mary was pregnant with Jesus and Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist. And Mary had to leave her community because everybody had shot her. They were, wow, she get pregnant and she got married to Joseph yet. And she, they must kill her. So she left and she went and spent several months with uh, Elizabeth, who was now in preg old woman, right? In her old age. And God blessed her womb so that she would care for John the Baptist. 
who would herald the coming of the Messiah, the Lamb of God, who will save his people from their sins. So, ladies, we have to help each other. Every Mary must have a Elizabeth. Okay. Now, ladies, we have been redeemed. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Oh, Lord. Ladies, you know, I remember as I was getting into my 30s, heading to 40s, and then heading to 50s, I was saying, boy, I don't mean, like this old age story, you know. <laughs> I don't like this. But you know, as I started opening up myself to the Holy Spirit and understanding that my body is simply an earth suit, a dirt suit, right? But the value of who I am is not in my body. My value is in my soul and my spirit, who I am as God's child. And remember that Jesus Christ said, one day this mortal will put on immortality through Paul in Corinthians. One day this corruptible shall put on incorruption. And then one day we're going to be glorified. We're going to be glorified. In the twinkling of an eye when Christ comes, he shall change those who belong to him. And when I started reading the Bible and understanding that, I started embracing my age. And so I would go on any platform now and, and proudly announce that I'm 53, going to be 54 this year. Proudly announce it. Because now I understand the value, right? The devil's chain is off my mind. Redemption in Christ. Ephesians 1, 3 to 7. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us ladies with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him. Come on, ladies. Just as God the Father chose us in Jesus before the foundation of the world, before you born, this is it, before you born, then he is. Before you, let me see some more names. I can call some more names in this place. Let me see some names in who is on this platform this morning. So I can see some names. I keep calling to the candidates. I want to see who else is here. Let me see. Charmaine and Dawn and Donna. Um, let me see. Elaine and Georgia and Jeannie. Isolina, Joan, <laughs> praise the Lord. Yes, ma. Um, uh, Carrie Ann, Latoya, Maggie, Woo, Marsha Wong, praise the Lord, Marsha, welcome. Nadine is on the line, hallelujah. Um, Robert, thank you, brother Robert, you're here with your sisters. Rita and Patricia, and Sandra, and Cherie, coming down, coming down. Let me see, Sharon, and Sonia, and Stacey Ann, and Stacey Ann. Tony, Tony, and Terry Ann, and Yuna, Winsome, praise God. Sisters, sisters, we were predestinated, meaning before you are born, your end was already set, designed by God, pre, before, destination. Before, listen, everything that you must accomplish for God is already done. So we don't have to fret and worry about nothing. The king who owns the world has put everything in place for you, Winsome. For you, you know, for you, Tracy Ann. He says, having predestinated us to adoption as sons, children of God, by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the, to the praise of the glory of his grace. God gets praise when we as ladies stand up and understand that we are royal princesses. By which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption. You know what redemption means? Buy back. We've been purchased back. We have we've gotten salvation. Salvage from something went wrong. Redeemed. Buy back. Through his blood. Ladies, you are priceless. Nobody can price you. The forgiveness of all the sins that we have ever committed. According to the riches of his grace, 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 God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sins. You know, the devil is so wicked. Sometimes I will be on my knees for this, and I'm there praying and supplicating, and the devil just bring back some memory of something, something bad. I used to do right on my knees, you know, right on my knees, that wicked nasty serpent. And I have learned, whenever he does that, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Jesus' blood has covered that sin, and Jesus blotted it out. Devil, you're going to burn. You're going to burn. When I don't cuss him, he bleeds. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, you have to know who you are. You have to know the platform on which you stand. You have to understand that you are redeemed, bought back, blood bought, kingdom children, right? The wages of sin is dead, but
for the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. Now remember my sisters, Psalm 32 verse 8. God says to all his princesses, all his daughters on the platform this morning, God says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. My sisters, write that down. Write it down. Write it down. Write down that scripture. Psalm 32 verse 8, God planted in my mind years ago. Years. When I just got baptized, he gave me Psalm 32. And so as the years have gone by and the storms of life come and the, you know, the old age coming on and the, the wrestling with issues going on, every morning, Jesus reminds me, Deborah, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou should go. I will guide you. So why are we fretting ladies? Come on. Link on to your source of power. Jesus says, Third John, beloved, my sisters, Tony, beloved, Stacy, beloved, you know, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Your soul is your seat of your will, your faculties. Is that the, the devil? The devil don't want your body, you know. Your body is a dirt suit, you know that, right? The devil wants your soul. But Jesus died to buy about that. And you got to give it to him. He will instruct you. All right, now. Ladies, my sisters, God is saying to you today, today, Jeremiah 30, 12 to 13. For thus said the Lord, thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bounded up. Thou hast no healing medicine. Sisters, fibroids, heavy bleeding, fibrocystic breasts, a uterine cancer, cervical cancer, the cause are coming in my office for rapid, 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 rapid. What is God saying to the sisters this morning on the platform, Facebook Live and YouTube Live? God is saying to his daughters today, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord. Hallelujah. Sisters, do you believe it? Do you believe Denise in Jesus Christ can heal? Your doctor said it is cervical cancer. Jesus said, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. Whose report will you believe, my sisters? Whose report will you believe, Juliana? Yes, <laughs> my sister Anderson, that, that makes, yes, whose report? Come on, my sisters, we're marching with Jesus today. We're kicking out Satan today, kick him out of your house today, kick him out of your body today, kick him out of your kitchen, kick him out, hallelujah. Take back your homes, ladies, take back your family, sister Campbell, hallelujah. My sisters, my darling, precious sisters, would you like to be made whole today? Would you like to be made whole? Mark, Mark 5, 25, 34. Here is this woman. Here is this woman, Sister Campbell. The woman has been suffering from the issue of blood for 12 years. The Bible says she spent all her money. She went to Dr. Miami. She went to Dr. Jerusalem. She went to Dr. Down at Egypt and nobody could help her. Donna said, I believe the report of the Lord. Yes, Donna Lewis, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She went to all the doctors, like many of the women who come to my office, then can give me a long list of all the doctors they've been to. And Dr. Williams, nothing now work. What do I do? I take them to the great position on my wall. Exodus 15, verse 26, I am the Lord that he did. Now, when she came, when she came, the Bible says in verse 25, a certain woman, who had an issue of blood for 12 years. But in verse 34, Jesus called her daughter. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plagues. My sisters, all of you are looking at all the names right now. Plus those who are on Facebook and WhatsApp. Jesus is still saying, daughters, come, come to me. I can make you whole. Now hear the story now. When she came, you know, when she came, remember there's a multitude following Jesus. The Bible says, and Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. So picture thousands of persons possibly were around Jesus that day. Because everybody wanted to heal. Everybody was so sick. But a certain woman, she came with the blood, right? 
So when she, went to, when she had heard of Jesus, verse 37, 20, 27, when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, listen to this, ladies, Donna Lewis, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Ladies, if you don't have that mindset, nothing is going to happen for you. She said this, you know, in her mind, you know, if I may touch but his clothes, I will, I shall be whole. So if you don't believe it, baby, it's not going to happen to you. And this is why many persons are going to church, pastor, and pray for them, and nothing will happen. Because they don't believe it. She said, I know, if I just touch him, I'm going to be made whole. She said it. 29. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself, that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? Ladies, Suzette, who touched my clothes? That then he is. Who touched? G today, Jesus is still looking for women to pull virtue from him. Jesus is sick and tired of women going to church to our bench, going to church half naked that the pastor cannot stand up out there and preach because the skirt too short. Jesus is still looking for women. How are you, press? The man them can't even come to church in peace because they're only half naked in the church. Cover your bodies, ladies. Jesus is still saying today, pull power from me, ladies. Pull power from me. She came as a certain woman. She left as a daughter, healed of her spiritual and her physical plea. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Would you like to be made whole? Praise God and trust God. All right, now. Let's look at some miracles. Is Jesus still working miracles today? Denise have a testimony. Winsome have a testimony. Suzette have a testimony. But I won't talk about theirs. I'm going to show you some others. No, I'm going to highlight myself first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm highlighting myself first. So the picture on the right is Deborah Williams diagnosed with breast cancer 2012. That picture was taken the very year when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. You see, you see how happy I was? Because I believe I am the woman in this story. I put myself in there. Jesus, I know you can heal the cancer. So Jesus, take the body and heal it. That was me in 2012. Doctor said, boy, you're going to die in five years. Cut off the breast. Chemo. Radiation. Doctor, 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 back up, back up, doctor, back up. <laughs> you know, God. <laughs> Sometimes these doctors leave and they God, you know, you're going to be dead in five years. You know, God, back up. I gave the doctor a copy of the book, the ministry of healing, and left him. And then I went to Jesus, right? And Jesus said, Deborah, read the book, the ministry of healing. Do what it says and you'll be fine. Jesus said, Deborah, James 5, call for the elders. I followed Jesus. And here I am. 12 years later, cancer free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, ladies. Come on, Susie. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I'm the first testimony. And I'm testifying that Jesus Christ is still healing children all over the world. So now here we have our lovely sister Marsh. She says, hi, everyone. My name is Anthony Marsh. I visited Dr. Williams July 26, 2022 with the following issues. Ladies, please, oh, dinner. listen to me now. She had abdominal pain, menstrual cramp, back pain, irregular bleeding, multiple fibroids. My weight at the time was 160 pounds and 5'5". Five five. I was 11 pounds overweight. Dr. Williams and her team worked with me for two and a half months on the New Star program. As of November 2022, I can shout praise God and thank him for his healing power in my body. The abdominal pain, the menstrual cramp, the back pain, the irregular bleeding are all completely gone. I am now weighing 137 pounds. And the best part of it is the big belly is gone. <laughs> I'm so grateful. I feel healthier and so happy. All glory to God. Thank God for Dr. Williams and her staff. Your work is truly appreciated. Jesus Christ is still healing people. Sophia Williams. 
March 2023, I had a consultation with Dr. Williams. I was referred by a church sister who was a former patient. I was diagnosed with bleeding, ovarian cysts, and fibroids. While on the program, I acquired better eating habits, elevated energy levels, less abdominal discomfort, better sense of well-being, improved mood, and reduced sinusitis problem. Do you hear what Jesus did for his daughter? I used to wear large size clothing. No, I wear small. My periods were erratic and unpredictable. Now it has normalized to three to five days duration. When I went back to my doctor to get an ultrasound, the cyst on one side had disappeared completely and the other is shrinking. Also, the fibroid has shrunken on one side and disappearing on the other. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, give him a hand. Praise the Lord. She says, yes, is it? She says, I was assigned a personal coach, Almoya, and my daughter, Petrina, joined me on the journey by consuming the meals. She was, she was my at-home coach and support system. She was 300 pounds and has now lost 50 pounds. For a mother, this gave me the greatest joy to know my childhood is improving. I am more creative in the kitchen and I use Dr. Williams' recipe book as a guide. Get the recipe book, people. Get the recipe book. It she said, eat healthier. Eating healthily might seem expensive at first, but when you do portions and consider how filling they are, it is economical. Thanks be to God for the spiritual upliftment I have gained on this program. And then Sophia, come on ladies. God loves women bad, 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 bad. And he wants us to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Now this is her daughter, right, who wasn't on the program, but followed mommy and she took off 50 pounds while working with mommy on the program. Jesus Christ is still the great physician. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, my name is Carol Cooks. I did my consultation with Dr. Williams in 2021, March. I was overweight with lumpy breasts, ladies, lumpy breasts, so many are coming into my office. Hypertension and high blood sugar reading was also high. I went on the New Start program and today all my readings are normal. I lost 29 pounds. I am giving thanks and praise to God for all he has done through Life, Health and Foods Wellness Center. Jesus Christ is still the great physician. Donna Clark. <clears throat> Hello everyone, my name is Donna Clark. I went on the New Star program 2021 for breast cancer and being overweight. Praise God, I am doing great. I lost 26 pounds. I recommend a lot of persons to Dr. William. This is true. Donna sent so many persons to me from the US. She said, because I got the results I wanted. So can't keep it to myself. I have to share it with others. She lives in New York and it is she's become my very good friend, right? And she's always sending persons here to us. You can't get pregnant. Can Jesus still open the wombs of women? Can Jesus still give some more um, Sarah babies and <laughs> Hannah babies? Whoa! My name is Chant um, Chantal. I am married. Was trying to have a baby but could not get pregnant. I did a consultation with Dr. Williams in 2021. She put me on the New Start program shortly after I got pregnant and delivered our bundle of joy December 2022. Here she is giving God thanks and praise for his blessings. Ladies, today we're talking about female. Jesus loves his daughters. Jesus is still making women healthy. Hi, my name is Kima. I used to be Dr. Deborah's hairdresser when she was in Ultra Real St. Anne. I always hear her talk about nutrition and health. Now here's the story. Whenever I go to the hairdresser or wherever, I am always talking about Jesus. Now Kim is in my ear and she has come here, come here, and I'm on the phone talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. New start, new start, new start. And after a while she said, can I go on it too? I said, yes, Kim. And I placed Kim on the new start program. She says, so I asked her for an outline to lose some weight. She put me on a detox program. I was surprised after doing the program, I got pregnant not only once, but twice. <laughs> I delivered a bouncing baby boy in July, 2021, 
and my baby girl in 2023. To God be the glory for his blessings. My sister, let me see you clap. Put a clap in the chat for Jesus. Clap Jesus. Let me see some hearts going up. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, man. Let me see some hearts going up for Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Clap Jesus. Yes, Donna. Clap, clap. See, see. Yes, Donna. Clap Jesus. Baby, he's clapping, man. Clap him, clap him, clap him. Sister Campbell. John Betty. <laughs> Jesus is marvelous. Sonia, he's marvelous. He's wonderful. Almighty God. <laughs> Prince of Priest. Jesus Christ. Our brother. Our leader. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No, my sisters. No, my sisters. Ladies. For you to get rid of your diseases, you have to know how your body, yes, Nadine, yes, Kanisha, <laughs> you have to know how your body make up, right? Yes, Sister James, you have to know, right? You have to know, it's very important. So walk with me now. Body composition can be analyzed in various ways, right? This can be done in terms of chemical elements. So ladies, you have to understand the importance of water and proteins and fats and carbohydrates glucose and glycogen and your dna you have to understand it's very important you have to understand about fat and connective tissue muscle and bone ladies you have to understand the, the cells in your body you have to understand that your body is made up of trillions of cells and you have to understand that you have more bacterial cells in your body than you have human cells ladies you have to understand this it's important right Yes, Georgia, you have to understand that 99% of the mass of your body is made up from oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus. Only about 0.85% is composed of a potassium, sulfur, sodium, chloride, magnesium. All 11 are necessary for life, ladies. The remaining elements are trace elements of which more than a dozen are thought are thought on the basis of good evidence to be necessary for life. So what could be now, sisters? If your body is made from the dust of the world and you need all these minerals and these elements to stay healthy, if you are drinking coffee and eating biscuit and that's your breakfast, tell me where is the element? There's no, it's, there's no element. You understand? If you are eating cup soup and that's your lunch, white flour with chicken back there's no element so you can't get healthy so to reverse the disease is simply to reverse what you are doing and put health back in your body therefore says our father from the kingdom whatever you eat my sisters whatever you drink and all that we do must be for the glory of god what happens in this stage ladies self die so you no longer look in the mirror and you admire yourself. You look in the mirror and you say, Oh, the priests in the Bible were dressed for glory and then for beauty. So we want to be beautiful because God loves beautiful. But our focus is not just that. It is glory first and then beauty. Because once you have glory, glory is going to guide you to beauty. You understand? And that is how God changed the whole thing. When you're about to eat something, your thought is, Will this food make my body healthy for God's glory? And if you can't say yes, that's garbage. You just dump it, right? You just dump it. It's garbage. We are going to start looking at the uterus. Now, every man on the platform came through this. <laughs> every male listening to us women talking about our health came through our uterus. Praise the Lord. Now, your uterus is a pear-shaped hollow muscular organ in your reproductive system it's where a fertilized egg implants during pregnancy and where your baby develops until birth it's also responsible for your menstrual cycle ladies you can't have a healthy uterus if you don't have healthy blood feeding the uterus it's not it's not hard to understand you know? healthy blood feed the uterus Healthy woman is not hard. No, the histology of the uterus, we have three layers. We have what we call the endometrium. And I'm telling you, my sisters, the cause, Dr. Williams, endometrium cancer. Cancer, cancer, right? So we have the endometrium, we have the myometrium, 
right? And we have the peritoneal covering of the peri peritrium, right? All right, so now I'm gonna show you a video. That's gonna explain all of that. Let's watch the video. Let's explain all of that. Where did babies come from? That's the age-old awkward question that our parents hate to hear. They might have bought some time by telling you that they found you in a cabbage patch, or perhaps that you were delivered by a stork. Of course, we know better now, but what did you know about the oven that bakes the bun? Stick around to find out in our short tutorial about the uterus. The uterus, also known as the womb, is located in the pelvic cavity of a female. You could try to look for it in males, but no luck there. It is a thick-walled muscular structure that lies in the midline, as we can see here, in our image of the abdominopelvic cavity. The uterus is about 8 centimetres in length, and it's actually roughly the size and shape of an upside-down pear. If we change our perspective so we can see a sagittal section of the abdominopelvic cavity, we can understand the location of the uterus and its relationship to other structures a little better. As we can see, the uterus sits between the bladder and the rectum and is connected to the vagina inferiorly. Okay, now that we're familiar with the location of the uterus, let's explore some of its anatomy. The uterus can be divided into four key parts. The fundus, the body, the isthmus, and the cervix. Let's move on to look at these in more detail, starting with the fundus. As you can see here, the fundus is at the top of the uterus and is situated above the entry points of the uterine tubes. Moving inferiorly, we have the body of the uterus, which is also known as the corpus. As we can see in our illustration, the cavity of the body is shaped like an inverted triangle due to its connection to the isthmus and both uterine tubes. Implantation of the blastocyst normally occurs here. Next we have the isthmus. The isthmus is about one centimetre long and as you can see is the constricted part of the uterus between the body and the cervix. Lastly we have the cervix, which connects the uterine cavity to the lumen of the vagina. The cervix is approximately 2.5 centimetres long and has two openings. The internal os, which opens into the uterus, and the external os, which opens into the vagina. Now it's time to have a brief look at some associated structures of the uterus. The first structure that we're going to talk about is the broad ligament of the uterus, which is a double layer of peritoneum. This ligament connects the uterus to the lateral walls of the pelvis and contains the uterine and ovarian arteries. Next we have the uterine tube, which is also known as the fallopian tube. We have two uterine tubes, along which eggs travel from the ovaries to the uterus. Okay, let's move on to look at the ovary, which produces and releases eggs. As you can see, you also have two ovaries. I mentioned earlier that the uterus is connected to the vagina inferiorly. The vagina serves as a conduit for menstrual blood from the uterus, accommodates the penis during intercourse, and during childbirth, the baby passes through the vagina to reach the external environment. As you can see, this was a very brief overview of associated structures. But if you're keen for more, then visit our website for more in-depth tutorials on these topics. Okay, so let's move on to the blood supply, innovation and lymphatics of the uterus. The uterus is supplied by the uterine artery, which we can see here highlighted in green, and the uterine branch of the ovarian artery. The venous drainage of the uterus is carried out by the uterine vein. Okay, so let's move on now to talk about the innovation of the uterus. The sympathetic supply is derived from the inferior hypogastric plexus, which you can see here highlighted in green. Whereas the parasympathetic supply is derived from the pelvic splanchnic nerves. Lastly, we have the lymphatic drainage of the uterus. Lymph from the body and cervix drains mostly to the internal and external iliac nodes, which you can see here highlighted in green. Lymph from the fundus drains to the paraaortic nodes. It's time to move on to our next topic, which is the functions of the uterus. Once a blastocyst has implanted in the body of the uterus, the uterus carries out various functions to aid the growth and development of the baby or the fetus. Firstly, it provides mechanical protection, preventing any physical damage to the fetus. It also provides nutritional support, which is essential for growth, and removes waste, keeping the fetal environment nice and clean. I mentioned earlier that the uterus sits in the pelvic cavity. However, during pregnancy, the uterus expands up into the abdominal cavity as the baby grows. 
When the baby is ready, the muscular wall of the uterus contracts to help push the baby out at the time of delivery. If fertilization of the egg doesn't occur and there's no implantation of the blastocyst, the uterus will eventually shed its lining in a process known as menstruation. Now that we're clued up on the uterus and its functions, let's get clinical. In today's clinical notes, we're going to talk about a procedure known as a hysterectomy. A hysterectomy is the surgical removal of the uterus and there are several types. If the entire uterus is removed, it is a total hysterectomy. If only the part of the uterus is removed, it is called a subtotal hysterectomy. Sometimes the ovaries and the fallopian tubes are also removed, which is known as a total hysterectomy and bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. This surgery is a very common procedure and has various indications, including reproductive malignancy, uterine prolapse, endometriosis, and major postpartum hemorrhage. As with any surgery, a hysterectomy comes with a risk of complications, including hemorrhage, infection, pain, and general anaesthetic complications. Depending on the type of procedure, you can take six to eight weeks to fully recover from a hysterectomy. So that brings us to the end of our short tutorial on the uterus. Where is it? Oh, no, ladies, I can tell you <clears throat> that the hysterectomy can be completely avoided. Completely avoided. I deliberately played it to the end because I wanted to see the side effects of a, a hysterectomy. Women always suffer from the side effects once the surgery has been done because once you remove a body part that's not placed there, you're going to have complications. It can be prevented, it can be completely avoided. Now, next, we're going to look at polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is a second factor that lots of women are coming to my office that they have polycystic ovarian syndrome. <clears throat> what is that, Dr. Dennis? Let's discuss. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS, is a condition in which the ovaries produce an abnormal number of androgen, which is male sex hormones that are usually present in women in small amount. In other words, Pidis, you see Pidis, she's 18 and she's her face. In other words, we have estrogen, which is a dominant um, hormone for women. So we have estrogen and something called progesterone and then testosterone. So women have estrogen, a little testosterone, um, progesterone, and little testosterone to balance. Mm -hmm. Men have it the other way now. Testosterone, they're men. Little progesterone, little estrogen. So we both need them in different amounts to balance. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is when the woman have too much testosterone going on in her body. The name polycystic ovarian syndrome describes the numerous small cysts, fluid-filled sacs that forms in the ovaries. <clears throat> Sorry. However, some women with this disorder do not have a cyst. While some women without the disorder do develop cyst. So in other words, they can have a cyst, but it's not polycystic ovarian syndrome, right? Now, ovulation occurs when a mature egg, this, remember the video, you just watched the video. Ovulation occurs when a mature egg is released from an ovary. This happens so it can be fertilized by a male androgen. Women with P 